Now, I was one of the five people that was watching it live. Same. Live. Not you and I. Rewound, you and I were watching it. Yeah. Not uh, clip uh, after uh, uh, uh. live in real time. You were and also the first person who said, this is real. Well, it wasn't the first person, but in our household of you and me sitting there. Well, in our watching. household, yeah. 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 <laughs> well, but we were like, like, so it was the second uh, lowest rated Oscars of all time. So yeah, I feel like it was just you and I watching it live it and everybody really else was watching like a, on Twitter. Yeah, it did really feel like a private showing just for us. It did. The, uh, I like to call it, you know, BS and AS, right? So like before slap and after slap. Before slap, it was, it was already a really poorly produced off the rails show. show. It sucks. You were driving, I think you were coming from the airport and you were partying in LA while I was home with the um, kids pregnant. Yeah. Um, yeah. And by myself. And were you so, barefoot or? Barefoot and drunk. Yeah. There it is, James. So I was watching it and it really was like, you know, nothing was landing. I mean, starting with the hosts uh-huh. who had never even talked to each other, it seemed like. It, it seemed like they never knew each other at all. It seemed like Amy Schumer, Wanda Sykes, and Regina Hall had never even been in the same room. Or met. Or met. <laughs> they were all like, the, the outfits are all different, and they're not, nothing's clicking, nothing's meshing. Yeah. Jokes are going a little bit too far and off the rails, and um, I have really bad secondhand embarrassment, mm-hmm. just like with a lot of things, people... Singing a cappella off the cuff, or white people rapping, rapping yeah. or whatever, or doing Jamaican accents. Yeah. yeah so yeah. I just had a lot of like secondhand embarrassment the whole time, and then slap. Then I was just like, I was in it. I was so uncomfortable. Fuck yeah. I, was it was so uncomfortable. It was I was so uncomfortable. It was amazing. I was so uncomfortable. It was amazing. The the weird thing about it is, and we had talked about it um, right after it happened, and we found out that it was real. Mm-hmm. So it was like, oh my god. This moment between these two people is going to be one of the biggest moments of all time. Mm -hmm. No one will shut the fuck up about it. I've never seen this many people on social media, every platform, post a picture, a meme, talk about it, have an opinion on it. Right. Everything across the board where there's nothing else. Like we need somebody, I hate to say it, we need Skeet Davidson to die to shift the focus to something else. Because we're flooded with all this shit. And I don't want to spend too much time on it today. Yeah. No, no. R.I.P. Skeet. What is that? Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. It's, it's God's music right there. Yeah. I, it's I definitely. Music. There's really no point in um, spending any time on it. The only thing I will say is, like, it has nothing to do with race or gender or anything, you know? No, but, you know, people are making it about it. I watched your uh, your boy, dude. Um Craig Melvin uh, from the Today Show. Oh. Yeah. I never know who it's going to be when Come you're like, on. your boy. You watch him every single morning. I like Craig. He, he brings a breath of fresh uh, I think He's great. I think he's great. Fresh air. He's actually. always unrehearsed, unprepared, totally. off the cuff. And he should be. Uh, yeah. To be honest with you, that, that it's, it feels more like a podcast out of him versus whatever the fuck Hoda and them are he's doing like now. He's like one second away from like saying the wrong thing oh, and yeah. getting kicked off, which I like too. But he, even he was just like, the the reason why this sucks is it sets our people back. And I've read this a couple different places from people um, where, and and black actors and everything too, who are just like, man, there's this stereotype that black men are angry and can't control their anger and they fucking hit each other. And uh, I was like unaware that that was a thing that people were worried about. And then all these black dudes came out and said it. And I was like, oh shit. All right, cool. And then some insider people, here's the other weird side of this. Um, there was some, a couple of people I knew who went to that after party, uh, that vanity fair party, mm-hmm. um, that which is the big after Oscar party. And I was like, what happened when he showed up or did he show up? You know? And so Chris Rock did not show up to it. No. He said Will Smith did. Mm-hmm. And then the DJ started playing, like, getting jiggy with oh, it. and he, like, So they showed up to all the stuff. They partied. Well, wait, wait, wait. Here's the other part about this. So I go, what was the mood when they walked in? They were like, the mood before he came in was like, you could hear a fucking pin drop. And everybody was kind of talking about that moment. And then he walks in. Everybody stops. And then the DJ starts playing that. And the whole place erupts for him in a round of, like, a standing ovation yeah. round of applause at the Vanity Fair party. Then they played like, he said they played like four more of his songs 
in a row and, and the whole family was there. So I guess that's the most egregious thing. He brought the kids, Jada, everybody, and they were all singing along to all of his songs. Mm-hmm. He, uh, I asked him how long he stayed for. I was like, did they rage? And he goes, he stayed for about an hour. Um, and then he left and he goes, when he left though, it sucked all the air out of the party. And he goes, that's when people started talking mm-hmm. about him behind his back. Right. Um, and that's, and he goes, dude, it, it was the black powerhouse people who were talking about it behind his back where they were like, Hey, that was super fucked up. Um, but they didn't do it to him. They didn't say anything to him. Uh, and it was like, uh, all right, cool, man. Like, what are we, we're just going to pretend that this is awesome and, and nothing went down. So, and, but that's Hollywood. That's it, Hollywood in a nutshell, where it's just like, all right, great. I'm not going to say anything to your face, but, you know, as soon as you're gone, I'm definitely going to talk about you. Yeah. Yeah, like this could have easily happened between, you know, Amy Schumer and Nicole Kidman, right? <laughs> uh, Anthony Chompkins and, and Ricky Gervais. You know, it's not a, it's not a race. If thing. Sean Penn would have gone up there and knocked now, out. Now, Sean Penn, Yes. Now listen. Knocked out Mickey Rourke. So I heard a like blind, that would have been fucking dope for sure, for sure. Yeah, and I think it would have made more sense. I think it's just that Will Smith, um, you know, cracked and his real your real self will always come out, mm-hmm. right? No matter how hard you're trying to curate this persona or whatever it may be, it will always come out. I find it fascinating, like in courtroom where they can get. You know, if someone gets on the stand, they can, in cross-examination, they can actually get them to, like, crack and have an outburst. And yeah, you're like, like Kyle Rittenhouse, that piece of shit. Yeah, <laughs> god damn it, he definitely cracked, right? Love Rittenhouse, too. We're trying to get Rittenhouse on the show, by the way. But, like, it's sure always amazing hands. to me where I'm like, really, you couldn't stand, like, five more questions to save your literal life? Like, you could not contain your inner rage, right? Um, so it will always come out eventually, right? And that's kind of what's happening. Now, I saw blind that Chris and Jada used to date in the 90s. Is this? No, no. They, they, Chris is one of, uh, one of Will's bulls. <laughs> Chris was banging Jada allegedly. Like while they during were the together? Okay. Because they're both in uh, the Madagascar series. Oh. So worked in the, okay, really? writer that worked in the 90s with Chris Rock dated Jada, and then something happened between them, and then they never spoke again, but she's been the butt of his jokes for quite some time, right? Like the when he hosted the Oscars, he joked about her too. You know, and w- like, uh, with one other joke, as far as I'm aware. Just so that, like, yeah, right? Just yeah. Jokes, and yeah. It, it was him making fun of her for boycotting the Oscars, and he was like, you weren't invited. Yeah, now that was a good joke. Yeah. This one... Yeah. It was a lame joke. He should have gotten slapped for the joke. Not by Will Smith, but like by yeah. just some other comedian being like, bro, hack. Yeah. I didn't understand it really. So hang on. I, 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 I have a... Jane. Hang on. Like, I have an explanation for it. Enough. I have an explanation for it. So the producers uh, released a statement saying it was unscripted. Right. So it wasn't... It wasn't on the cue cards. He just went off the cuff with it. Exactly. Which, it's a fucking old joke from like 30 years ago. 30 years ago. And I don't ago. know, do people even remember that movie? Well, you could tell that he was going off the cuff because he, he was trying to riff on this Javier Bardem, um, Penelope Cruz thing, but he like didn't, he couldn't remember Penelope Cruz's name. So he was like calling her Javier Bardem's wife, which like, you know what I mean? Like, he was sure. just clearly not, it was not on the teleprompter. Otherwise, her name would have been there. Like, he literally said, okay, I'll present, but you're not going to write anything for me. I'm going to do what I want to do. And they're like, okay, cool. If you get slapped, you get slapped. Whatever. Yeah. But, um, okay, so so then I guess that makes sense. They, there is some kind, they have some kind of history, right? Uh, something is weird there. Who something knows? Something is but, weird but there. But they're, they're also fucking weird. So it's like. They're also weird. And the last thing I'll say about it is like, we all know people that are in these like, you know, celebrities are not impervious to toxic, horrible relationships that like can ruin your life and career, which I think is what Will Smith is in, right? And for the past year, he's been trying to do this like damage control, justifying his relationship, like uh, we're good, we're good, we're all good. I'm trying to be a better man Scientology thing where I just think they're really, 
you know, we all have those friends that have to constantly justify why they're with someone. She's the black Angelina Jolie, where it's just, there's a cloud over her that that is undescribable, and you're like, something's fucking off with that lady. Like, I don't know what it is. I think that, you know, if the, if, yes, Giorgio. Is this what would have happened to me if I would have stayed? No. Stayed with what? Well, she did have a shaved head, but... That girl you were dating had a fucking shaved head? Yeah, would I have become Will Smith? Oh, no. No, no, no. I'll talk to you off air about how that would not happen, but... No. You needed to get out of that, and you did the right thing. (laughs) Jada Smith has some kind of... Her, the vagina is something. Tupac, something you name special. it. They've all been there. Uh, she, her manipulation skills are amazing. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Scientology thing to back it up. I mean, she has got a real fucking hold on, and she has dated a lot of people. Yeah. That yeah. like love her. Even the guy that came out, um, you know, that exposed their kind of open marriage situation. He was heartbroken. Yeah. Which is why he like came out like, and why nobody's ever said anything negative about like, him. He I was love just her like, I so her. much, and I don't get it. But you know, I don't really get it with Angelina Jolie either. Like I don't it's, either. when you first look at her, sure, but after no. a couple interviews and after some stuff, you're kind of like, I don't know. It just seems yeah. like a lot, right? And um, one of, we, we talked about this on Drinking Bros yesterday. So I, again, we don't need to spend too much time on it today, but. Uh, but I think that's it. Uh, one He's prediction just... I had yesterday, I go, dude, his Chris Rock's ticket sales will go through the goddamn roof. Yeah. So overnight, those tickets, because we have a ticketing company, Drinking Bros, tickets.com, shameless plug, whatever. Those tickets now have gone from $46 to $346 a ticket. And they've also added more tour dates for Chris Rock. So. Yeah. So not only did Will Smith kind of ruin his own moment, which he did. Mm-hmm. He fucked himself. He ruined his own moment. He's going to have to do even more damage control now. Not only did he do that, but then he also made Chris Rock, which was already, we kind of weren't super into him. People were kind of like, meh, the last special was whatever. He's kind of hacky. Those two jokes were fucking awful. That's where it would have ended. And what Will Smith kind of did... Revive his career. One, Revive two. Chris's career if and then does, fuck his moment. And if he the- does 15 minutes on, on that whole thing in his next tour... That special on Netflix or HBO, wherever that lands, yeah. will be the highest rated thing ever, and they'll back up the trucks and, and pay him probably 20 or 30 million for it. Uh, he'll probably get the Chappelle money for that. 